the strong law of large numbers is a statement about a sequence of independent and identically distributed random variables. And that term means exactly what it says. So the sequence x1, x2, x3, and so on are independent and identically distributed. Independent and identically distributed random variables are studied so much in probability that they're even given a special uh, shorthand IID. So that's the abbreviation for independent and identically distributed. So uh, by identically distributed, we mean they have the exact same distribution. Uh, if x1, x2, x3, and so on are independent and have Poisson distributions, that doesn't mean that they're identically distributed. If they're independent and have Poisson distributions with parameter 3, then they are a sequence of IID random variables. So it has to be exactly the same distributions. There is a question in probability of whether such sequences even exist. And it turns out that they always do. Um, so we're not going to go into the details of that because it's more advanced than uh, the topics in this course. The strong law of large numbers says that if we have a sequence of IID random variables and look at their partial sums, so like the sum from 1 to n of xi over n, then that limit converges to the expected value of any one of the random variables. And that limit converges with probability 1. This also works if the expected value is infinity or negative infinity. And since these random variables are IID, in other words, they all have the same distribution, uh, I just used e of x1, but it's the expected value of any one of the random variables. It's a pretty significant result because what we have here on the left is random values. We're summing up a bunch of random numbers, and when we divide by n, that actually kills off all the randomness if uh, we let n go to infinity. So eventually it has to go to a fixed number and the randomness is gone. So let's look at an example of computing some of these partial sums. So we're going to let x1, x2, x3, and so on be an IID sequence with PMF, the probability of 4 is a half, and the probability of 10 is a half. The expected value of x1, or any of the x's for that matter, is 1 half times 4 plus 1 half times 10, which equals 7. So if we take a particular outcome, omega, in the sample space, remember that the random variables are functions from the sample space to the real numbers. So x1 of omega, x2 of omega, x3 of omega, and so on, is a sequence of 4s and 10s. So uh, let's suppose that we got a sequence uh, for a particular omega, which was 10, 10, 4, 10, 10, 4, 10, 4, 10, 4, and so on. Maybe these are the first 10 terms in the sequence. Then we can compute the partial averages. We would have the first one is just 10, because it's 10 over 1. Then to go to the second number, we would have 10 plus 10 over 2 which equals 10. And by the third number, we're going to have 10 plus 10 plus 4 over 3, which equals 8. And by the fourth number, 10 plus 10 plus 4 plus 10 over 4, which is 8.5. And once we go all the way down to 10 numbers, we would add up all of these numbers and divide by 10, which gives us 7.6. With probability 1, the sum will eventually converge to 7, as long as the numbers actually have that distribution that uh, there's always a one-half chance of a 10 and a one-half chance of a 4, and that the numbers are independent of one another. So if they're not independent, uh, for example, if they all had to be equal to the same number and we got a 10, then they're all 10s, and so it's not going to converge to 8. I'm sorry, to 7. Um, and another thing to notice is uh, how much these values change in each sum. So uh, the first one, well, it doesn't change because we got two 10s, but then it drops down by 2 to 8 then it goes up to 8.5, then to 8.8, .8, and then down quite a bit again to 8, and then up a little bit, and down a little bit, and then as this goes on and on, uh, the changes are going to get smaller and smaller. Because you add one more 4 or one more 10, it doesn't change the average by very much. So uh, that's why this will go to some fixed value. Eventually it's going to converge to some number, because the changes are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller 